Hi guys, so this is part two um, of installing a DET3 on a Nissan Micra. You'll have to excuse, excuse you'll have to excuse the audio quality if it's not the best because I am doing this on a laptop, as it's what I've got the uh, software currently installed on. Now, the first um, video that you watched was how to actually wire the thing into the car um, and how to do all the wiring and the inputs that you'll actually need. But if you plug it into the vehicle, it won't just work straight away. You will need to set up the software so it can ex know what to expect because it will just work off a default and there's no input set up. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is the DET3 Tuner client, uh, which you can download on their website on the downloads page on um, ECU Masters. And you just download it for whichever uh, operating software you've got at the time. Um, so yeah, we'll jump into this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump onto setup and um, set up scales configuration here and this allows me to change what each one needs to be whether it's a percentage, a voltage or whether it's expecting a map sensor or anything else like that. So what we're going to go ahead and do is refer back to our diagram as to what I showed you before um, so number one let me just double check. So number one was our math um, which will be a linear voltage scale which is 0 to 5 volts because it will vary between that sort of range so that one's completely fine. Analog 2 should be set to DT3 with built in 4 bar map sensor now that's what I had on mine you can change that by clicking load and then it will load up with a bunch of presets if there's a 3 bar map sensor or if you're not using a map sensor you can obviously find which one that you need to use on there and all you do is select it and then click open and then boom it's done now if you need to select the next one I didn't use um, analog 3 at all I don't believe um, my map sensor was obviously number 2 and number four was the TPS. Now a percentage scale is what you'll need for that because it, it depends on how many percent you're pressing the throttle at that time. So we can go ahead and click OK on that. As you can see this was what I set my MX-5 up for so that's fine. So we're going to go to setup again and setup tables. Now this is going to allow us to change the inputs to the DET3 as to what the inputs and the wiring need to correspond to what settings in the actual programming. Now we want to modify analog number one because analog number one is our math sensor. Now we want to modify what the ECU sees from our math sensor. So analog one in will be the math sensor into the DET3 and then we're going to modify it with a load and then send it out. So we want to modify math one and that's going to be our math. Now load you can either use number two which is our built-in map sensor or I use number four which is the TPS sensor and I just prefer to use that because it's whether you're using what percentage of the throttle at any one time. I didn't use corrections so I had them turned off and as for the rest of this table it was basically all left alone I didn't change anything. Now you can see this has changed this this is now percent along here rather than a voltage so this is your throttle position sensor and this is your RPM up the side so that will move around depending on how much throttle you're putting on at any particular time. Now, uh, output configuration, oh, sorry, ignition configuration I want to do next. If we go to ignition configuration. You want to retard single signal because that's the one that it will use off a Micro K11 CG13. And the ignition type is a uh, hall or optical sensor. Now the maximum RPM, obviously you can play around with this whatever you want to put on it, but I put 6800. Number of signals per 720, so that's two rotations, will be four, because there will be four, ign um, four ignitions per 720, so that's fine. And I just left that alone and clicked apply. Now. This is where you have to do a little bit of messing around and I can't really help you here. Um, you're here where it has the ignition one, two, three, uh, the analogs in, it will light up as to what you need. Now analog four was your TPS. 
So that should, if you take your foot completely off the throttle, that will read one number. And if you put your foot all the way on the throttle, that will read, read another number. So if we go to analog input configuration, and we go to analog 4, which is your TPS. If you take your foot all the way off the throttle, whatever it reads in analog 4 needs to be transferred to the, uh, the percentage. So if, for instance, in analog 4 we have, uh, I think mine said 0.63 as a minimum. So if we put 0.63 here, 0.630 volts, and then the maximum, when you put your foot all the way to the floor on the throttle, that will give you another number here. Just hold your foot down on the throttle and it will give you a number. Whatever that number is, type it here and then click OK. What that will do is it will change the map to suit that voltage. So originally, um, if it was on its default setting, then the throttle, the, the map would only allow you to use, say, this much. But now you can see it says 13 instead of 0, so it will allow you to use the whole of this table, which is just better for tuning ability. And obviously it's more efficient to be able to use the whole thing. You would do the same for the other inputs, um, such as your analog 1, which is your MAF. You would just have the engine turned off, but with the um, the voltage running, the MAF, MAF on, sorry. Um, whatever the standard static MAF is, that's what you'd put on there. Uh, you don't really need to worry about that too much. Um, it just will affect how good the balance is. And your analog 2 will be the the map sensor, you just adjust that once again to whatever these voltages say. Right, so with your analog one, that's obviously your math sensor. Um, the voltage here and the voltage there, if they're exactly the same, then that means that the DT3 is doing nothing. It's making no change uh, and it's completely normal. Now, what you do is to add more fuel, you would select, I, I usually scale over the whole thing for initial tuning and then you can add numbers to that, that fuel chart. And what you would be doing is you'll see this number start to rise. That makes the ECU think that there is more air being used, therefore it adds more fuel. Um, and that's how you sort of control the fueling. Now, the timing, uh, all it does is add a delay. You can retard the signal, but you can't advance it. So you can obviously take timing out, but you can't add timing in. So what you would have to do to add timing is advance the distributor as much as possible on the ECU uh, on the distributor by undoing the two bolts and rocking it you advance it as far as you can and then retard it here which brings it back to normal settings so then to advance that would say give you 10 degrees you just go back to zero and that's how you'd had an advance there is a way of controlling advance but it's just a very basic way of doing it I can't really demo anymore because of obviously my inability to plug this into a car because I don't have it wired in anymore. Um, but if you've got those settings correct and you've got your wiring 100% right and you're seeing good voltages here, then you should be ready to roll. I mean, if you blow into your MAF sensor, into the throttle body, and this number changes, then you know that your MAF's good. This one, um, if you blow into the um, vacuum line that you've put to the DET3, that will vary and this one obviously is your TPS so when you push the throttle if that number increases then it will uh, it will show that they're all working another way is go on the log window watch these lines and see when you blow in the, in the throttle body if it goes up then obviously that shows that you've um, you've got it connected right same with the thr throttle position sensor when you press the throttle if it goes up you've got a good connection there and lastly with the DC3 with the um, vacuum line if you blow into it you should see a small movement you won't make much pressure but you should see a deviation in that one and it'll, that will confirm that you've got that correct as well but yeah apart from that if you need anything else drop me a message um, I will try to make any ans answers as easy to understand as possible if there's anything else that you guys need then obviously I can try to help you as much as possible sorry that this video is short and probably a bit cluttered with information but I hope it helps some people out thank you